What's the next bullshit you want to throw at me? This morning, says Ivor. I saw him. Bellor is here. I think it won't be long now. Ivan leans silently on his staff nearby. One of your clansmen comes to you out of breath. Rook, he says. Things are real bad. Look, there's nothing you can do at this point, but a lot of the caravan have been robbed, killed, just disappeared. Those of us left are going to split up and hide where we can. Wanted you to know in case we somehow pull through this. He runs off, clearly distressed. You grimaced, wondering if this could have played out another way. I don't, I don't care. You consider what you want to do now. Uh, try to get some rest? With everything going on, you find yourself completely exhausted. You go off on your own and try to place, find a place to get some sleep. You slumber poorly, waking several times in a panic. Eventually you give up, only slightly more alert. I mean, that's okay. I just wanted to get a day in on my, my healing. Right? Because then I get Rook back. Okay. Ivor, can we really keep this up? Ivor looks like he hasn't slept for days. We've lost a lot of fighters. The weight of the situation is crushing. Then from the distance, you hear a horn. Dredge don't use horns. It's motherfucking Gandalf. Look, look to the east. Fucking shadow facts. We're saved. Dredge don't use horns. Ivan appears at your side as the long caravan of people come into view. Dredge turning to attack them. Who's that? You ask. It can't be, says Ivan. He runs towards the gates, shouting. Do you see their banner? It's Hakon. As you wonder how they got here, the gates are heaved open. You charge into the field, clearing a path through the dredge. But then Hakon betrays you and kills all of your men. Rip the end. Okay, bye, Trigby. Sorry. Sorry, dog. Uh, Krumer. I'm actually going to swap Krumer for Trigby. Let's try that. Yeah, and then he gun stabs you in the face. And the back. In the face again. That's the best part of the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy is the fucking now for wrath, now for ruin. And the Red Dawn for Theolingus! It's so good. That whole bit is so good. And I don't even really like King King uh Ao guy so much. But like, shit. That bit is just like hot damn, kids. Theoden, Theoden King, that's his name. <laughs> For Narnia. <laughs> yeah, like it's, I mean, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Let's just rip into this dude. Blorp. There you go. Now you can't do basically anything. Gun elf, gun elf, you're the best. Don't fucking die. Goon. I find that I don't really use the archer special abilities too much, to be honest. Like, oh, you little fucker! No, you don't. No, you don't. I, I can't. No, I can't get within range. That's fine. Okay, let's get let's get Rook going here. Yeah, everybody just get in on that guy. <laughs> Free shots. Yeah, it's good for puncture and it's good for uh, Rook Rook targeting. Uh, all right, I can get in here and spin to win on this guy. Uh, let's do it. 
Because there's only two targets, so. Yeah. All right, big shield boy. Think you're tough. Think you're cool. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that nice cluster attack. Little bits of strength damage to everybody else. Poke. And this way we kind of create a little wall to like shield those guys in, which is nice. I know, right? It's nice when they do armor attacks and you're like, yeah, it's good. I'm glad that I don't have any hit points to lose here. That's fun and fu and good. I'm, that's good, yes. No, not him, him. You really got it. Like, if you're gonna use Rook, you really need to make good use of that ability, hey? Oh, I should have given him some willpower on that attack. No, stop it. Stop hitting him. Now, either we can kill that guy, or we can almost kill this guy. That's better. There we go. Okay. Everybody go for a walk. Okay, spear time. What's everybody got? That guy's got five. Okay, let's go up here and do that. Jesus, 50%. <laughs> God damn it. That's cool. Pretty much just taking down the armor now. I guess I can kill this guy. Let's do that. What's up, Windfaller? Welcome back. Thank you. Bye. Ooh, armor break. Damn. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So he's gonna eat it, because, I don't know, that's how Trigby works. Uh, now I guess I can just start knocking him out, because... Who's, who's up next? That one? All right, let's kill him. Just take his turn away. No, not for you. Oh, it wasn't that guy, okay. Well, whatever, I'm just dealing him one, one damage a piece, so. Right, if someone dies and moves their next ally up. So it sort of doesn't matter, I guess, or you need to look two ahead. Anyway, it's over, so. Get the fucking thing, dude. Yeah, mark him. Trigby, Trigby has died many, many times. 
I mean, died. He's been injured in battle. It's the same thing, basically. I'm okay with it. I've come to terms with Trigvi's fragility. I just hope that he also has. Juno. I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, Ivan. You're a wimpy piece of crap. I'm so awesome. She smiles and they embrace. Ivan is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry. I couldn't make it to take her home. I ran into problems. Problems is putting it lightly. There's a mile-wide canyon, practically splitting the world in two over those hills. Couldn't find a place to cross. Worst threads are practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north anymore. They're everywhere. Yeah, we noticed. Glad to see you made it out alive, Ingvar. I take it the others didn't. He again becomes quiet and emotions towards Juno. She somehow got across. Found her out cold the second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can get right now. Bellor is here. Gods be damned. I thought I was free of that menace. I will deal with Bellower. Come on, no need to tempt him by standing out here. Juno, she's pretty cool. Yeah, I think Trivi just likes dying. He just likes falling down. <laughs> What's up, baby? Yeah, shame she's best buds with I. I don't. I don't like Ivan. He's a nerd. And yeah, she's like Lady Medivh. Like a cooler Lady Medivh. Hagan's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in Borsgard. However, you can't... You can't feed them, so they all die. Hagan joins you on the wall with his... Oh, 315 supplies. Yes, they brought food along with them. Good. When your friend shows up and you're like, oh, I don't have enough food for you, but he's like, I brought takeout. Behind him, the Prince Luden stands alone, looking miserable. Good. I have one last trip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Ivan. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. It takes everything within Ivan's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook, come with me. We'll return in two days. Maybe less if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. <laughs> A bunch of negative responses that mean the same thing. What? Where? Why? Not far, says Juno. She pauses and something shifts in your vision just for a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head. And you've already been through a lot. She speaks again, the rest of the world melts away. But you're needed. You can't find the words to argue. What? You just mind control me? You can't find the will to argue. Great. Good. <laughs> Fucking sorceress. Sorcery-ass motherfucker. All right. Oh, look at us and our big thing of supply. What was dredge? You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are. Walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're alone, aside from hundreds of dredge who are all facing toward an enormous stone ahead. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. I mean, suggestion doesn't normally make you pass out. Yeah, she earns a dark side point. A short little banner we got. We're at the Godstone of Straths. You glance nervously around by the dredge, didn't seem to hear her. It's okay. You can speak softly. Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? Juno smiles. What could have come across as profoundly creepy looks sincere instead. No, the dredge cannot see us. To be more precise, they can see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. Who knows what lurks in the hearts of men? The Juno knows. What are we doing out here? Do you know of the gods, Thravs? If you know this stone exists, even among those who have lived their whole lives in Borsgard. When Dangler deals in fortune, Thravs taught men the value of trade in a different way. He shows them it has consequence. Two sides of the same coin. See the silver and the stone? The gales up here wear away the stone, but the metal remains. We need a piece of this silver. 
The god Strafs is wreathed by imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded these weapons to the gods. Oh my god, are you gonna make me a witcher? And they use them to kill each other. Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The menders call him god of secrets. He was both. Who are you? I wish we'd had time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I'm on the Mender Council. You've met Ivan, my apprentice. How are you doing these things? Controlling minds? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You are right. Menders do these things and other stuff that we wouldn't tell anybody about. Some of us practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother's first creations. We are called Valka. I believe I am the only one who can influence another's mind. Then why not take control of Bellower? Oh, you sweet idiot. I learned the talent to heal minds, not control them. Though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of Bellower, it's the difference between convincing a hungry convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. The truth is, we're rarely a match for the Sunder anymore. Our advantage is we can train more Valka. It is also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge while the Sunder simply grow older and more powerful. Bellower is both immortal and beyond my influence, to a point. Then how do we stop him? The God of Secrets will play a part, as will you. Why did you pick me? Why didn't you take Ivan or Hakon? You don't even know me. Girl! I apologize for putting you in danger. Ivan must keep Borisgard from falling while we're away. If anything goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us makes it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at Borsgard. You were the only one I knew would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to Alette no matter what. Why are we surrounded by dredge? Because they're all over the place. They seem to be drawn to the godstone. There are many things we don't know about Straff. Maybe they seem as a patron or an attraction they cannot explain. Does Straffs have something to do with that serpent in Einertoft? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't or won't. I have my suspicions, but until I've had time at the Minder Libraries, it'd be unwise to speculate. For all our knowledge, it seems we know little. Imagine how the rest of us feel. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Let's get what we need and go. Indeed, you'll need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. You'll forge it into an arrow to slay Bellower. Wait, until after everything you've told me. Make a magic arrow to shoot Bellower? That's all it takes? Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a far away look in her eyes. GM horse shit. No. Uh, that's, um, that's not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Bellower, even if it were to strike his heart. He has no physical weakness. But it will sow doubt in his mind. When it pierces him, I will help him believe he is dying. The rest of you will convince him with sword and axe. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to trick him into thinking he's dead. That is the most insane. He really can't be killed? No. Someday he will awaken and realize he's not dead. I imagine he'll be quite upset. Then we'll get a sequel and there'll be other games. First, we must make the arrow. Focus on the task at hand. I actually think that's quite cool. The idea of like an unkillable creature and the best you can do is trick it into thinking that it's killable. That's, I like that. That's cool. That's a nice little tricksy wizard way of dealing with an enemy. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. You fucking climb it, or turn me into a bird and let me fly up there or some shit. Rook, I'm not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop, so be careful. Then you fail your athletics check, fall to your death. The end. And when you get back, Hakon has killed all of your friends. For no reason. I don't, I don't know why. It doesn't matter. That godstone looks hype, though. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for a loose piece of the silver vein. Even without looking out onto the ridge, you can feel every sinister face watching you closely, held back only by Juno's influence. Panic races through your blood. Climb higher, where it may be easier to remove. I guarantee if I go back and tell Juno I can't do it, they'll be like, no, more. More of it. Do it, ag do it again. As you climb, you can't help but notice the stony masks of dredge lined up before the godstone like worshippers before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. The dredge do not react. Look for another piece. 
While you're up here, you glance quickly around to see if there's any more low-hanging fruit. You're able to pry away another smaller piece of silver orb before your nerves give out. You nimbly descend to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says. As you walk back through the dredge, their heads turn in unison to follow. The dread that lingers and the shaking in your hands does not subside for hours. Hey, what's up? That drawing you did of Hong Lu was fucking awesome. Thank you. You approach the gate of Borsgard again, relieved that they're still standing. They're still standing better than they ever did. It looks like they took a beating while you were gone. Alette rushes to your side and throws her arms around you once you've crept through the gates. Daddy! Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, Take this time with your daughter. Find a smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver. I have other things to which I must attend. Wizard shit. But meet me on the walls when you're done. Uh, I've got 45 days of supplies, but I can't rest. <laughs> God, but I can spend my renown on other stuff, so. That's cool! L -l -l level up fucking finally maybe Hakon could have brought me some some renown maybe anybody want to bring me a big old bag of renown big huge bag bag of renown anybody no nobody fine fucking vikings so I feel like I feel like if you wanted to do this as a tabletop game, you would need you would need to have a system that represents both the fighting, the like 4E style managing your up and down strength stuff, reduce damage, the two health bars, like all that as a fighting kind of mini game. And then you'd also need Another way for the GM to structure choices to do vignettes during the travel phase. So it would be like town phase, travel phase, combat phase. And honestly, I think that that some of the stuff that I've seen Tor working on for the next set of Torchbearer things, uh, I, I think that's probably the closest I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, good call, Umbra. The One Ring does some of that as well. Um, I'm definitely going to promote Rook because another level five is fucking awesome. Um, yeah, town combat travel. Yeah, mouse guard. That would be a great place to start looking uh, at at where that stuff would uh, would would benefit you. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then let's here. Let's take a talent here. Yeah. Cool. Now, what is this? item do 20% two times strength damage yeah you could you could do a, uh, a friends at the table style thing and just play two separate games yeah fourth edition and, and kingdom <laughs> I don't think saga of the Icelanders would be a good saga like this game does not really care about gender roles in games uh, or, or in in uh, Icelandic society uh, Saga of the Ice Thunder would be an okay place to start if you wanted to hack something like that, but Saga's is very much like, it's more like Dogs in the Vineyard, Saga is, uh, than, um, uh, than, than it is like this, I think. Um, but certainly worth a look, just because it's such a good game to begin with. Uh, okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, I don't think Blades is a good choice because Blades is about competing groups. It, it would very much be, yeah, you'd want a dwindling resource. You would want to teach the GM how to do those. Like, okay, you know how in, in Torchbearer or in Mouse Guard, the GM is impelled to, like, make a twist. If you fail a roll, you do a twist or a consequence, right? Uh, you would want to teach the GM, like, okay, a travel phase should last between three and ten events. 10 events being like a very long journey, uh, a short journey being like three events, right? And events are of a certain type. They are a uh, fight, they are a conflict, they are... Now, no, so Eric, you're talking about Band of Blades. I'm talking about Blades in the Dark, right? You would have to dramatically hack it like Band of Blades does. Yeah, please, please pay attention, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm just saying Blades as a game would not work if you just scraped off the poetry layer. 
So you would need to have you would need to have like types of events that occur. Yeah, betrayals or like food problems or uh, petty bickering or monsters or supernatural or whatever. And you would pick three to ten or whatever of them, uh, and then you'd insert them as as choices. And then you would say like, there are ways to handle these things. The players would use their skills. It might be a simple single roll, uh, but it might also be uh, broader, right? It might also be like um, a conflict, maybe a fight, right? Um, and you would earn renown and you would spend resources based on the, like every time you encounter something, you would you would spend resources maybe. Um, and you, they would be for pacing, right? But I think, I think Torchbearer uh, is the closest fit because Blades and Powered by the Apocalypse and like that shit, doesn't care about timing. And this game desperately cares about timing, right? Like instead of light and rations, we have supplies over the course of time. And I, I really think that when we when we look at um, the overland travel stuff, I think you're gonna see a lot of similarities between uh, between these. Now yeah, there are there are some like fan made banner saga like RPGs and I've looked at a few of them, but they're they're fundamentally just like, how do we directly translate the literal mechanisms of this game into a tabletop environment? And I don't know that they capture the spirit, right? They capture the kind of the letter of the thing. Um, which isn't to say they're bad attempts, but like they need, you can tell that the people who've made them have only played Dungeons and Dragons or like Pathfinder. They have a very narrow frame of reference. Um, it takes a while, but you finally find someone willing to craft an arrow for you. He eyes you suspiciously when you show him the silver. But he shakes his head and gets started. Alette watches, the smith's fire reflecting her distant stare. I talked with Ivan a long time while you were gone. I told you to stay away from that dumbass wizard. He told me a lot about Juno. Is she really as powerful as he said? She's like 80% as powerful as Ivan thinks she is. Maybe too powerful. Yeah, Renown is not, uh, there's no, this game doesn't actually have what I perceive to be a reward structure. Survival is the reward structure. Renown is a currency. Um, it's like you buy diamonds, you buy astral diamonds for m real money, and then you spend your astral diamonds on in-game currency like gold, and gold becomes, right? Like it's, uh, I think, I think the reward is continuing. The reward is pressing on. Um, the game is really more of a death spiral than a, a mountain climb. As long as she's on our side. Dad, I think I know what's going to happen now. An arrow? She's going to make you shoot Bellower, isn't she? I mean, you could do it. Don't know for sure. Come on. Who else is going to do it? Ivor? I mean, well, a lot of us have bows. Alette, I know where this is going. You're afraid of me dying. This isn't like before. We can't run this time. That's not what I... Let me do it. See? That's what I'm saying. I'll think about it. No, there's no time for thinking. What do you do when Bellower comes straight for the person holding the only thing that can destroy him? Let me speak. Yeah, Dad. Everything's changed. Skulger feels so long ago. Am I choosing which of the two of them to sacrifice? I'm not asking because I'm afraid of losing you. I'm not... I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Let me do it because you know I'm a better shot. Old ass man. I have a better chance of puncturing his armor. We only have one shot. I'm not a child anymore. I'm just some, I'm not some girl. I'm your daughter. I can do this. For once, let me decide what happens to me. I know you can do it. Take the arrow. She smiles and takes your hand in hers. We'll survive this. I know we will. You sit by your side silently until the smith finishes his work. I mean, I'm not going to be a dick about it. I'm not going to be like, no, shut up, girl. You with your dumb girl bow. You don't know anything. Like, listen, sometimes you just got to let them. Oh, my God. Halden's razor. <laughs> cool. Is that where you decide that the enemies don't mean you harm? They're just stupid. Mathanius, Sebastos, welcome back. Uh, all right. Wow. Level eight. Fuck off, game. Fuck directly off, you prick. <laughs> All right. 